Dear painting, I do not claim to know my own heart, but evidently banishment makes it grow fonder. Nothing recollects the good old times as intensely and indulgently as loss. Under the peachy shimmer of sentimentality, past conflicts transform into valuable life lessons. Business acquires a sweet aftertaste, and even the fist that clenched onto grudges aches to let go, forgive, and be forgiven. Because I miss you. I see now how I faltered and what I must do to mend this self-inflicted rift, which appears ever more like a gift, for rare is the loss within my power to reverse. My error was one of habit rather than malice. Having long been a devout disciple of the winged school of art, whose central teachings are wing it and fix it as you go, if it feels right and it looks right, it is right. And let the outcome of every painting be a surprise. I learnt to approach painting like a swallow's first flight, wide-eyed and trusting that my wings would always be filled by your breeze, lifting me above the heaviness of thinking too much and into intuition's wispy skies, a floating haven unencumbered from the rest of my earthbound life. Since I'd never known otherwise, I mistook this blessing for fact, and drank up the illusion that it would last a lifetime. Entrenched as one's penchant for assuming good fortune and begrudging ill luck. So, when the instant of the imponderable pighead befell, Appalling was the shock of finding myself unwinged and a haven plummeting towards the realm of everyday life, swarming with all sorts of mundane strife, of stress, of anxiety, of malcontent, of trying too hard yet accomplishing too little, of hankering to please to the detriment of integrity, of words falling on deaf ears and turning a blind eye, of wrestling with hypocrisies that twist and gnaw from deep inside. It's all so insufferably trite. It's not beauty, it's not art. My God, I hope it isn't us. Is this what we've become? Can we only exist in some great escape? What can I say? My heart was left hanging in the clouds while I was stranded on the cold, hard ground. I couldn't help but look up and stare and long for sky and a return to our feathered flights. I forgot I had feet and perhaps the time had come for me to trek my way out, starting right where I stood without a revelation from above. Consider these studies, my clumsy baby steps, to wherever you are. Seeing as I have never made detailed studies before, the making of these has afforded all the charm of a physics problem set on getting 13% right. I would trace my line work in my sketchbook and tweak wonky lines, make a new trace with the new line work and tweak new wonky lines. Then, I would move one step forwards onto colour, and immediately hop one step back to line work. I have danced this ugly two-step, to and fro, and to and fro, which has mercifully come to an end now that I've finished tracing the final line work onto you. What a peculiar sensation it is, coming to a painting and knowing exactly how I'm going to paint it. Even though this knowing has firmed the ground of my mind, poor is the view without your sky. Still, my faith in you remains. From where I am, I can feel the winds rising again. Fondly yours, V.